Hey guys, today I'll finally put up a short video just to touch on a very simple but uh, useful topic. Normally I do very long videos, but today it's a short one. So there are a bunch of posts on this uh, topic, but uh, as I've noticed, it isn't quite as widely used as it could or maybe should. Another post or video to add to the lot shouldn't be too much. So we will go with another one. Basically, the topic is is uh, using uh, cancellation tokens with the ASP.NET Core MVC. So taking advantage of this. So I've put up the simplest sample. It's an MVC application or uh, web API startup. Almost the default. I just added the HTTP client here to to use in the demo, but it didn't even need to use this. But yeah, sure. So. I made a controller with a couple of uh, actions. So, uh, in the controller, I'm injecting the HTTP client and the logger, so I can log some stuff. And then let's go right into the the meat of it. So, I created a get a thing async in the route thing. That is making a call to to HTTP stat US, which is a a useful service to to test these uh, requests and I'm putting a slip of uh, of five seconds why so we can test the usage of cancellation token basically if we use the cancellation token in the action the the framework will, will inject one and the, if the the request is cancelled by the client of uh, our API the cancellation token is uh, is cancelled. So if we propagate this cancellation token across our logic, uh, across our layers, imagine we call a service layer that has methods, async methods, we pass the cancellation token and it passes to the the database layer when it's making its, its queries and the queries are asynchronous, so cancellation token and uh, yeah, so we can see the sample pretty simple i have the cancellation token here i pass it to the http client so and it waits for five seconds be before get, giving me the response so if uh, the cancellation token is cancelled uh, our request is cancelled and it's propagated to the http client which can cancel its request so if it uh, if it's not cancelled I print completed if it is if it is cancelled I print cancelled so I have the application running already and uh, Firefox with the with the samples so the API sample the endpoint thing so this will make a request to my API that will make a request to HTTP status so I make the request, we see here that it's making the request, takes five seconds, yeah, all good. But now, and uh, I print it here, task completed. But now if I make another request, cancel, it stopped, and we can see here in the log, the task was cancelled. So we don't need to, you, you, the, to complete the work that our server is doing just because we didn't know that the client issued the cancel of the request we can cancel as well so not waste time and resources for something that will be ignored by the client if we don't don't use this cancellation token we would wait for this to to end so i can even try it just for the demo cancel here go again okay it's running now request I cancel nothing happened here and the task is completed because it wasn't cancelled but the browser didn't see anything because we cancelled so we we 
we, we had our server working for nothing. So I guess this is useful. And this is just a request, but imagine we are on a long running, long running process. Okay, long running is probably a bad example because if it's a long running process, it shouldn't be a, in the REST API. But uh, you get the picture. If we are doing queries, stuff like that, one example that uh, comes to mind is if we have a client application in JavaScript with a, like a search box with, with autocomplete, we are making requests to get stuff and uh, as we type we make more requests and our server is working uh, for nothing we could cancel the previous request using its cancellation token because on the client side we can say okay now make a new request and cancel the, the one before and uh, on the server if we don't use this cancellation token it, it will just do it all even though the the client is not uh, is not waiting for it anymore so i created here another another action kind of unnecessary maybe i think the first one gets the point but just to to have different samples so here i'm making a, a four with the and checking the cancellation token for this so even if i committed this out imagine we have an an api that doesn't support the cancellation token we could at the same time make it our ourselves so something like let me just start it again the ideal is every asynchronous operation has the cancellation token but imagining it it doesn't we could do this in the in the time we have the process on our hands it's running where is that so I'm making a request the same as before if I don't cancel it will work now and process completed now if I cancel There's an exception. Yeah, okay. The exception is different, so I caught the wrong exception. Apparently, throw if cancellation requested throws a different exception from when it's in here. Let's just try. I wasn't expecting that, but. That's what happens when you do a video without testing everything. So run. Go, go, go. Okay. Run up. Another request. Uh, cancel it. And now we got process cancelled. Okay. So the only difference is that this throws a task cancelled exception and the other throws a operation cancelled exception don't know if this makes a lot of sense but okay regardless i think it takes the point across the thing is cancel the process along the way if it will not be used for nothing if it will be used yeah go ahead even if the client cancels it we should complete because we have something that we need to do but I'd say most of the time, if the client no longer cares, we no longer care. So if we are making a database query, another request to another to another service API, we're probably just better off using the cancellation token. And like I said, it's just put it in the action method, and the framework will inject it and take care of canceling when when the client cancels hopefully hopefully this is useful to spread the word because this, this is just a convention with if we don't go around the docs or see some someone talking about this we probably would know but yeah hopefully this is useful thanks for watching see yes